Hey everyone, Chaos Prime here, and today I'm going to be going over the day one patch details. They were released on Reddit earlier today, and I thought I'd just go over them. I am currently doing a giveaway, so if you want to be in with a chance of winning a copy of Anthem, simply click on the link in the description below, or on the pinned comment. Right, so let's dive straight in to the patch notes. So we have high level fixes. They have improved loading times, so hopefully these will be a lot better than what we have now, especially the ones going out to free play. Fixed many infinite loading screens. I didn't encounter any of these personally in my 10 hour gameplay, so I'm not sure if this is a PC thing, but if you did encounter it and you're on the Xbox, do let me know in the comment section below. Fixed multiple challenges not tracking properly. A number of issues have been fixed that were causing players to disconnect or crash. Weapons and gear now have numbers present for modifiers. What we need is a stat page. General fixes, and there is a lot of them, so let's quickly go through them. They have loot reveal and expedition summary now correctly played during the end of the expedition screen. The gather party mechanic has been made more lenient in a number of situations. At the end of expedition screens, players will no longer get stuck on recording victories or skipping all. Game no longer hangs in Javelin menu when unlocking the second, third or fourth Javelin. During the mission What Freelancers Do, dying after killing Junkmore and freeing Arcanists leave you unable to progress. This has been fixed. Challenges now unlock for players at the correct levels. Fix some camera issues during cutscenes. Camera issues? Legendary contracts can now be accepted from the social hub contract board. This is pretty cool. Some enemies have had their shield values decreased. Good job. That's the type of instant balancing I like to see. Loot now properly drops for players who are downed. Good stuff. The texture quality on the NPC Prospero has been improved. Final boss of strongholds now drop loot instead of only being shown on the end of the expedition screen. Good stuff. This was one of the fixes that I actually wanted to see. Brilliant. Fix the timeouts on echoes and relics to prevent griefing and to handle disconnections properly. Good stuff. Players can no longer fall through the floor during the third trial on the Fortress of Dawn. After disconnecting, rejoining an expedition will now place you back into a squad if you were in one previously. Corrected an issue where players could not interact with each other in the launch bay in certain circumstances. Corrected an issue during the mission Bad Deal where outlaws won't spawn. Blocking progress. That was a bad one. Again, I didn't play that far enough to get to this mission, but that is a bad one. But hey, early access is the beta test, right? The start of expedition screen has been improved. Addressed a variety of situations where killing enemies does not properly progress world events. Opening a chest now increments Tomb of the Legionnaire progress for all squad members present. Now this is a problem because at one point there's going to be a quest that pretty much prevents progress that requires you to go and get a certain number of ultimate kills and chest openings and pretty much it's a filler quest for I don't know if there's actually a reason for this quest but it's a filler quest and people in groups were going around opening chests and it wasn't counting for each other so everyone had to go to that individual chest and it just basically delayed progress it is annoying and I'm happy they're fixing it for the 22nd Scar snipers can no longer shoot through storm shields. That's a good one. Corrected an issue where players would get stuck on the end of expedition screen in some situations. Players will no longer get disconnected in joining the Finding Old Friends mission while the cinematic is playing. Address the number of situations where players can get stuck on the environment in the launch bay. I mean, how? Increased the damage of the electric status effect. Corrected an issue where the Shield of Dawn could be crafted with less materials than intended in some situations. The Platinum mission feat now grants completion as intended. Status effects can more reliably be applied to Titans. Strongholds fixed an issue that would cause a stronghold server crash after defeating the last boss. Temple of Scar players can no longer get stuck in the mine tunnel in the explosives room. Again, with the Temple of Scar, players can no longer be blocked from entering the Explosives Room due to Fog Wall. Fixed Tyrant Mine so people that join the Stronghold in progress do not end up locked away from their team. This was a big issue during the demo and the VIP demo, so I'm happy they fixed it. Especially if you joined while they were in the boss battle, you pretty much were stuck outside until they wiped and then you could rejoin them. 
so that's a really nice change. Adjusting lighting in Tyrant Mine underwater section to make it easier to navigate to exit. Well, the lighting was always a nightmare in that one, so I'm happy they've made it brighter. The Swarm Tyrant will no longer get stuck in the side cave entrances in some situations. I mean, I don't even know how people are managing to do some of this stuff. Corrected an issue where players would spawn into different areas of the Tyrant Mine in certain situations. Gear and Weapons Having first pilot unlock suit after tutorials, creating a new pilot and going to forge no longer causes load screen hang. Ice damage bonuses are now correctly applied on ice gear. Suit wide bonuses from inscriptions are now functioning properly. Players can no longer salvage equipped items. I mean, wow. I mean, I didn't try that, but wow. <laughs> I mean, imagine getting that legendary and saying, oh look, I can salvage, oh shit, oh wow, that's a really bad bug, I don't even know how QA would have missed that, that's pretty bad. Javelin specific gear and or weapons are no longer able to be used on javelins as they aren't intended for. I did see an interceptor running around with Colossus gear, that was hilarious, no seriously, that's Freaking funny as hell. You just see the interceptor with like massive bulky shoulder pads. It's hilarious. If you look around, you'll find it. I highly recommend you check it out. It's funny as hell. The Endless Siege Masterwork Auto Cannon no longer displays a damage increase of 0% in its tooltip. Javelins. The Colossus Javelin is now able to activate its shield more quickly after using an ability or firing a weapon. That's pretty awesome. Thick boy love right there. The Storm Javelin now reacts to getting hit when its shields are up, so it's going to take a flinch I assume? Fixed an exploit that allowed the Storm's ultimate attack to be used more times than intended. The Colossus Javelin can now shield and revive at the same time. Big it up to the Colossus! That's an amazing update, that's an amazing change. Not longer do you have to just sit there and get beaten to crap, you can just put your shield up, thick boy style, and do your thing. Interceptor combo aura has been increased in power and now has a damage over time component. Nice, it's got a dot as well. Crafting. Non-masterwork materials purchased from crafting store now show as their proper rarity instead of incorrectly showing as masterwork. I'm sure lots and lots of people loved exploiting that one. Controls. Additional mouse and keyboard control improvements have been made and nothing else is said on that. UI, this is a good one because this one is really important. Some conversations were not popping up the reputation points post conversation completion. This has been fixed. The squad screen now displays the correct information for each player. Fix the number of issues where subtitles will no longer get stuck on the screen after dialogue has finished. Settings should no longer reset upon exiting and restarting the game on Xbox One. Motion blur can now correctly be turned off. Finally! The electric status effects now shows scale damage properly. An option has been added to hide the squad member HUD. I mean, why would you want to hide it? The edge of the compass will now pulse to indicate enemy locations. Okay, that's cool. A notification has been added in Fort Tarsis if a player's vault is at the cap of 250 items. That's a really good quality of life update, especially for people who like to farm, because you're just collecting, collecting, and with the way the current system is done, you go out, you collect your 25 items, come back to the fort, then back out again. You don't do anything, but being notified that you are full is really awesome. On the repair the strider step of a cry for help, the search radar has been adjusted to correctly lead the players to all four tools. Good stuff. Primer and detonator icons have been added to all interceptor gear. And this was something that was missing. I did raise this in my previous video, so this should be a good change and finally get people back on track. Corrected the user interface issue where a player's ultimate would show as available when it isn't. This was a demo issue, a VIP demo issue as well, open demo issue, and I'm happy to fix this because there was many a time where a friend of mine turned around and goes, hey, I've got my ultimate and went to use it and then bow bow. Well, I mean, the day one patch update looks to be pretty meaty, pretty beefy, some more Colossus updates there, and lots and lots of fixes are coming into this that were discovered most likely during the early access. So all I can tell the people that did take part in the early access, especially the PC crew who have access to the full game, thank you for the beta test, and thank you for making the game 
a better place for us PS4 users. Right, I hope you enjoyed the run through of all the day one patch updates, and until next time, remain legend. Thank you.